That's just a fact because it is coming. Become educated. Okay, so let's uh, look at Gen Z or Gen Z. I think you say here in the uh, UK. Okay, so Gen Z is uh, this uh, global generation of uh, uh, kids that were born between 1995 and 2009. So they're about 17, 18 years old um, to about right. 27, 24, 27. I'm, I'm a little jet lag, can't do the math right now. But, um, so this is the first generation that has been born into a, general, uh, a digital life. And, um, and again, some are calling them an extreme version of millennials. And these are some other names that uh, have been given to them. Screenagers, click and go kids, um, up pagers, cotton wool kids, digital integrators, um, global generation. Uh, bubble wrap generation tweens. Um, so these kids, basically. And the thing is, is that there's a lot of them coming up, and so it's going to have uh, a major effect on society. And in fact, 16% of the population in the UK is, falls into this category, and, um, and a lot of them outside um, in developing countries, particularly, um, uh, 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 I want to say down there, China <laughs> and India, um, to be uh, to be precise. Um, and so this is this uh, generation that has grown up and they don't know what it's mm -hmm. not like to have one of these in their hand or to swipe, okay? They, it's just natural. And they have been building social capital and networks since before birth. And I, I love this new, it's a New Yorker cartoon. Hi, I'd like to add you to my professional <laughs> network on LinkedIn. Okay, well, it's still in, in, in the tummy, in the womb. Um, so imagine that. Imagine being able, um, as a fundraiser, to be able to, to do a fundraiser for a charity and to be able to uh, uh, tap into your social network and um, still having maintained contacts with people from kindergarten and asking them to donate to a cause. Just think about that for a moment. So, um, so here's one. I have two of these Gen Zs in my household. I have two teens. Uh, Sarah and Harry, and this was even a few years ago when they first started to get their um, mobile phones. So, mommy, of course, has to be on in Instagram, but you know that it's mostly uh, younger folks on in Instagram, teens and millennials. So, I happen we happen to be out to dinner, and um, and of course, they start texting under the table. So, I documented it on Instagram, and um, and then five minutes later, my son posts a comment. Monkey see, monkey do. <laughs> I didn't even know he had an Instagram account. Okay, so they are texting, they're Instagramming, they're Snapchatting. They use their phones like texting appliances, okay? Um, not like phones. I say, why don't you call? Oh, that's too much trouble. I can just text, it's easier. And of course, with all this texting, you have to learn how to speak emoji and text codes. Um, I'm just learning. Does anyone know what that emoji means? My son was uh, at an away camp, and I, I just wanted to make sure he was okay, so I said, how's it going? And he um, sent me that emoji, and I thought he was unhappy, but I guess it's, oh, never mind. Um, I don't know what that means. And I had to ask him, what does that emoticon mean? And then he did O-N-V-M. I didn't know what that meant either. <laughs> Until one of my uh, followers on <laughs> Instagram um, explained it to me. And then, of course, luckily, um, there's a cheat sheet available, you know, what all these short codes mean and what all the different emoticons mean. And so the point of all this is if you're going to cultivate this next generation of donors, learn to speak emojis. <laughs> learn to speak those text codes, speak their language. And what that means is they're not going to read a really long fundraising letter, they're, you know, or if you're preparing materials for them, um, it has to be in their language. Um, Let's take a look at some profiles of these Gen Z fundraisers. Um, uh, so here's the first one. This guy is Braden Quinn Mannering. And I first um, uh, encountered him. He's, he's like maybe 12 or 13 years old. But when I first encountered him, he was 10 years old. And he left a comment on my blog. I was giving away some um, free tickets to the nonprofit tech conference. If you wrote a comment about why you think technology is important for nonprofits, um, you had a chance to win one of these tickets. 
So he posted a, a, a comment that said, you know, my name is Braden Quinn Manoray, and I am 14 years old, and I've started my own nonprofit and, um, to, 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 you know, to, to feed people in my community, and the use of technology is really important. I want uh, the ticket to come to this um, conference and learn more so I can change the world. And so I thought, that's pretty amazing. So I emailed him and said, you got the ticket. And he emailed me back with a CC to his mother. Unfortunately, my mom won't let me go because it's the first day of school. <laughs> <laughs> so he started uh, his nonprofit, which is called, um, at age 10, Braze Brown Bags to Fight Food Hunger in His Community. Because he was really passionate about this whole whole issue around food insecurity, people that couldn't put food on the table, and um, or food deserts where there was a lack of fresh uh, fruits and vegetables in certain communities. So he created his own nonprofit. It's registered <laughs> and everything, and he raised fifty thousand dollars to purchase food, healthy snacks, and water to, to distribute to families in need in his community. And his his work to battle food insecurity captured the attention of Michelle Obama, the first, late, uh, the first lady in the White House, and he got an invitation to meet her and was given an award. And he did all this before the age of uh, 13 or 14, okay? So my point here is, aside from look out world, here they come, is they have their own ideas about how they want to do fundraising and they want to be in charge, okay? So um, that means you have to start to think of ways to adapt your fundraising methods to fit this generation. You have to have some flexibility. They may not just take do it your way. Um, and that's starting to happen. This, how many of you remember the UNICEF campaigns and those little orange boxes? Or maybe maybe I'm too old, but um, but you know, you go on trick or treat, you go around the neighborhood and you collect money for uh, as well as candy, but you collect money for UNICEF and those little cardboard boxes. Well, what UNICEF has done is sort of updated that campaign, and they have been actively experimenting on um, crowdfunding campaigns so that this Gen Z could set up their own campaign and fundraise online, because that's the new way of doing it. And uh, one of the things that um, they have learned is that, um, is that and going around to different clubs and meeting with this Gen Z again is that they won't necessarily go off and take the playbook from UNICEF fundraising and follow it precisely. And they've had to um, make their campaigns very adaptable. So again, you got to think about <clears throat> not how they can do your campaign, but how can you adapt your materials and your campaign, even its structure, uh, for them. <clears throat> Another example comes from uh, the, the Colorado Give Day. Now, I'm not sure if you have this in the UK, uh, uh, Giving Days, sound familiar? If you know what it is, raise your hand, if you make sense. Okay, so it, it, it's basically uh, in the US, very popular. With, uh,